If you could know the truth about the threat of climate change, would you want to know? This is a question posed by a National Geographic film, Before the Flood, which features Leonardo DiCaprio. It's a great question that throws down the gauntlet to potential viewers, as hitting the pause button would obviously answer with a decided no. Although, presumably, you would not have even purchased or clicked on the film if you didn't want to know the truth. But what is the truth? And as a filmmaker, how do you present it in about an hour and a half? Keep in mind that we're not talking about how to present one aspect of the climate crisis, such as wildfires or climate migration, but the whole shebang, from the fact that Miami is now flooding on sunny days to the disturbing fact that the fossil fuel interests are spending millions of dollars every year trying to convince the public that the climate isn't even changing. The approach that this film takes is interesting and arguably pretty effective. You introduce the audience to a protagonist, DiCaprio, who wants to know the truth about the climate crisis and sets out to find it. In this case, by traveling the world in search of answers. Along the way, he talks with people as diverse as Barack Obama, Pope Francis, Elon Musk, and Dr. Sunuda Lorraine, who's the director of India's Center for Science and the Environment, and who really takes the U.S. to task in the film for failing to lead in the crisis. In a sense, DiCaprio acts as a surrogate for the viewer, who also wants to know the truth to the question with which I opened. If you could know the truth about climate crisis, would you want to know? If you answer yes by not hitting pause, then buckle in, as you and DiCaprio are embarking on an epic whirlwind journey. Incidentally, the climate footprint for all this travel and production was, according to the filmmaker, offset through a voluntary carbon tax. This general approach is incidentally used by a range of environmental films, from Gasland to Cowspiracy. In Gasland, Josh Fox's family receives a letter from a gas company wanting to lease their property to set up a fracking operation on it. Knowing little or nothing about hydraulic fracturing, Fox then sets out on a journey for answers, with you, the viewer, along for the ride. Similarly in Cowspiracy, you and Kip Anderson embark on a quest to learn the environmental impact of eating animal products. Um, a little trivia here, DiCaprio, who has long been a committed environmental activist, was an executive producer of Cowspiracy. So are Fox, Anderson, and DiCaprio really as uninformed as their own screen personas appear? Probably not. Still, what do you think? Is this an effective rhetorical device? And before the flood, the approach is noticeably somewhat different. Unlike Josh Fox in Gasland, DiCaprio's persona is not professing ignorance of the situation. He hardly can, as early in the film he draws attention to the fact that in 2014, he was appointed as the UN climate ambassador. Still, he acknowledges that, since he is hardly an expert in the climate crisis, he still has much to learn. He then sets out to learn it with the viewer, you in tow. In both of his inconvenient films, Al Gore takes an entirely different approach. Gore's 2006 documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, was a phenomenon. Although it is not in the top 10 highest grossing films of documentary films of all time, it is number 11. Partly on the merit of the film, Gore was awarded the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize, along with 1,500 scientists of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Gore received half of the prize, the scientists split the other half. A good deal of an inconvenient truth was given to establishing Gore's credibility. No, he's not a scientist, but he has been working on the climate crisis since the 1970s, and he also works with a range of very um, credible climate scientists. In short, the film hopes to make clear that you should listen to him, as he is presented as the right person to deliver this message. In Gore's 2007 follow-up to An Inconvenient Truth, aptly named An Inconvenient Sequel, Truth to Power, the filmmaker takes largely the same approach by working to establish Gore as an internationally recognized expert. In contrast, early on and before the flood, DiCaprio wonders if the UN did the right thing in appointing him as their climate ambassador. As he baldly puts it, I mean, to be honest, they may have picked the wrong guy. 
If you have watched Before the Flood and an Inconvenient sequel, I'm curious to hear what you think about these different approaches. One of the reasons that the iconic and inconvenient truth did not make my list of best environmental films is that a great deal has changed in the 14 years since its release. For example, while Gore was correct in asserting that the film Climate Change played a role in exacerbating Hurricane Katrina, which is the 2005 storm that devastated Florida and Louisiana, killing 1,200 people. Well, you know, scientists now have a much clearer understanding of how this works. And sadly, there have been a range of horrifying storms since Katrina, like Superstorm Sandy, Sandy and Hurricanes Matthew, Harvey, Irma, Michael, Maria, and Dorian. An inconvenient sequel also takes on the job of introducing viewers to the politics lurking behind all this, which Gore, a former vice president for two terms, is obviously in a position to know a good deal about including visiting a Texas city where a Republican mayor firmly believes in renewable energy. The film also introduces the viewer to the COP21, where the Paris Agreement was signed, by taking us there with Gore. Another little piece of trivia, after its premiere at the Sundance Film Festival, an inconvenient sequel was edited to include Donald Trump's announcement that he would withdraw the U.S. from the Paris Agreement, along with Gore's response. Before the Flood and an Inconvenient Sequel are different films with very different approaches, yet they both take up the formidable job of communicating the breadth of the climate crisis to viewers in about an hour and a half. I'm curious to hear what you think of each, or both, if you have watched each of them and are thinking about the two together.